Web games are more impactful than one would usually believe. If you were a kid on the early to mid-2000s internet, you wanted two things. Subbed anime posted on YouTube in three parts, and web games. The problem? Beside copyright takedowns? Early internet games did not have a great reputation. Most were either poor quality, obtuse, rip-offs of one another. Granted, there were exceptions. Everyone remembers Newgrounds, cool math games, or even Miniclip. But these had their own issues. Newgrounds was... Newgrounds. Cool math games you could play in school, but those were math games. Except for the balloons. Miniclip? I only remember playing pool on there. No website had a real seal of quality. Except one. One that stood out. A company that had content, quality, and... Uh, quirkiness? The Cap of Quality. PopCap Games. A studio that put out polished games. Ones anyone could play. Though they were not always really free to play. So, uh, go get mom's credit card. PopCap was a prophet in casual games. A company that cultivated a base among hyperactive children and bored office workers. Their franchises are universally known. Bejeweled. Bookworm. Peggle, Plants vs. Zombies, and Zuma. Each had a unique design and taste. PopCap's influence on the mid to late 2000s internet environment cannot be understated. PopCap's games, public or premium, were revolutionary, time wasters before anyone had an iPhone or could even tap a touchscreen. There was no mobile store to advertise PopCap's products, only internet chatter and word of mouth. Nobody stumbled upon PopCap through Twitter, or, eh, stumble upon. I learned of them through my aunt, who had heard about their games at her office job. I too spread word of them. What was unique about PopCap is that there was no other website really like it. None that I can remember. It felt like something special. There was Steam, but in a day where most PC games came in boxes, PopCap was new. Many days were spent slaving over in San Aquarium or Astro Pop. That was when you could get games on PopCap's website. Where have the good PopCap games gone? Besides the Steam? How did the pop go flat? This will not be a real history or analysis of PopCap, but it will try to show how important PopCap was. It should be known. PopCap was once the king of casual. What exactly was the PopCap brand? If someone never saw this seal before 2011, they would probably wonder what PopCap even is, beside the developers of Garden Warfare. Today, it looks to be just another subsidiary or development studio of Electronic Arts. Their original website, with all its excitement and promise of fun, is gone. Though it was not always like this. Once, from about 2000 to about 2008, PopCap was the king of the world, or lord of the web a studio focused upon developing polished, addictive games. Though often simple, every PopCap idea had a unique style and interesting mechanic. When everyone booted up a PopCap game, they knew they would be entertained for an hour or so. And entertained everyone was. Until they had to pony up that five to twenty dollars. But hey, mom's credit card. Like a good drug dealer, PopCap knew how to get people hooked. For what were basically web games, their business model was equally ingenious and insidious. That's what provided the quality. People played for free for an hour or so, then they had to pay up. A business model PopCap wrote all the way from Bejeweled to the EA buyout. And it worked. Until it did not. Who was PopCap, though? In 2000, it was just the three studio founders. Jason Kapalka, Brian Fayette, and John Vici. With no funding or venture capital, they ran the studio out of an apartment on 526 Schrader Street, San Francisco. An apartment with a room they called the Crack Den that only had a mattress. Until they moved to Seattle in the next few years. Except, at the beginning, they were not PopCap games. They were Sexy Action Cool, a tongue-in-cheek name for three guys developing a foxy poker game. When showing too much skin proved to not be that profitable, they dropped the idea. Instead, they turned to Jason Kapalka's not entirely original idea, Diamond Mine. Little did Kapalka and co. know that Diamond Mine would be their golden ticket. When it rolled out under the name Bejeweled, due to Microsoft's publishing demands, the group still took the profits, despite their begrudging acceptance of the name, as they thought it was too similar to the contemporary Brendan Fraser film Bedazzled. 
Still, each $20 sale of Bejeweled Premium came in with a... Yeah, it did. They actually programmed a computer to do that for each sale. It rolled in the profits. In 2000, Kapalka, Fayette, and Vici offered to sell the company to Microsoft for $50,000. In 2011, the company was sold to Electronic Arts for nearly $1.3 billion a rather large increase in investment. Microsoft bought the franchising rights for Bejeweled, but never the game or the studio behind it. A mistake on the same caliber as Blockbuster not buying Netflix, which also didn't happen in 2000. It was Bejeweled that made this massive profit too. Profit it still makes today, in varying forms. Though the pop cap it makes the money for is no longer the pop cap of old. But Bejeweled really was an, uh, excuse me here, diamond in the rough. In the first month, it made $12,000. In the next month, it made $35,000. And in the third month, it made $150,000. And it just kept doubling from there. By 2008, Bejeweled had generated $300 million for PopCap, their main claim to fame. By 2014, the Bejeweled franchise had been played by more than 500 million people and accumulated more than 10 billion hours of play since 2000. The ultimate killer of time. It has even been called the Gone with the Wind of video games. Though there's no new idea under the sun. Or something. The first hit solidified their strategy. It was this strategy that carried PopCap to acclaim. Bejeweled was not an original idea at any point. Kapalka, who came up with the formula, has even confirmed it. He claims Bejeweled was based off an earlier mysterious web game he only remembers as The Colors Game, which supposedly was similar to Bejeweled, but needed to be refreshed on every move. No one has ever been able to confirm if this platonic form of a video game ever actually existed. The Russian game Shariki, literally the balls, may have been Bejeweled's conceptual ancestor, aligning colored objects in a Tetris-esque fashion. A simple formula, so the idea was not exactly new. Bejeweled's popularity was because of the simplicity and universality. Originally, the gems were going to be fruit, until that proved too hard to make look unique. So PopCap turned it into gems to look colorful and engaging for players. Bejeweled was simply a web-based, improved version of Kapalka's mysterious Colors game, which is what most of their games would be, improvements on older, tried and tested formulas, but marketed towards a casual audience. No refreshing was necessary in any PopCap game. Every following game followed a similar strategy. Take an older game idea, modernize it, then add a twist. From Bejeweled in 2001, to Peggle 2007, to even Zuma 2003. No PopCap game was truly original, but every one was accessible. Bejeweled was simply PopCap's take on the ever-popular Puzzle Color Match game, a new variety of Chain Shot from 1985, or Tetris, also in 1985. Peggle was an addictive game of near luck and near chance, not too unlike a digital Japanese pachinko parlor. Even Zuma's balls of... Uh, Jade were not new. That was a descendant of the 1998 arcade game Puzzloop, along with many other influences. Everything PopCap did was based off tested strategies and established genres. In game design, they were not absolutely groundbreaking. Even the perennial Plants vs. Zombies from 2009 was a spin on the tower defense genre. Two peas in a pod, PopCap and players. When most games still came on a disc from Best Buy, downloading was appealing. Players of any age could get PopCap games. Their website was easy to use and the games were right there. Friendly, if a little underhanded. Every game had its own gameplay, art style, and demo. All quick and easy. Bejeweled was shiny jewelry you had to match. Bookworm was Scrabble with a worm. Feeding Frenzy, though not a PopCap original, was Fish and Size. And San Aquarium was Fish and Aliens. Zuma was... a frog. Then the ever-popular Plants vs. Zombies was... well, you get it. This was the cause of PopCap's... eh, uh, popularity. A lot of puns in this one. In an age before children had access to Steam, or even games to run on it, PopCap was a godsend. The games could be installed on any computer, work or home. PopCap's games were casual before casual was really a label for video games. Both you and your mom could play them. Always fresh.
PopCap's properties were the forerunners to modern phone games, games you could open and play to kill an hour. A round in one only lasted a few minutes. Though, back in the day, these games were a little more expensive than most mobile apps. Today, $20 for Bejeweled, a game literally developed in four days, may seem a bit outrageous. PopCap established the formula, though, or they just adapted it to a digital format. That is why so many of PopCap's games were based off arcade games. Were they ripoffs? No, not really. At least not brazenly so. There was always a new theme or gimmick within them. That's why the studio was so open to the reveal of the iPhone. PopCap had already perfected the phone game formula before it was even a thing. Bejeweled had already been included on some cell phones in the early 2000s as a pre-installed game. That was back when cell phones still had keys. PopCap had the keys to the casual game kingdom. It had its own service and its own identity, which made their games so enjoyable. Where else would one find something like Peggle? There was just something uniquely satisfying about hitting pegs in a chain, or getting a row of balls, or solving a complex word, or shooting aliens, or surviving a big wave of zombies. Phone games still understand this. The PopCap strategy persists. Now it has come full circle. Most people know Bejeweled as Candy Crush instead of Bejeweled. People cannot even play PopCap's games on PopCap's website anymore. The old mecca of quality has fallen to dust. Now you can only find the remains of PopCap's originals thrown to the vultures on Steam by EA. There are still demos, but it's just not the same. The founders have long since left, and PopCap gone largely quiet on the web development front. What popped PopCap? Beside time, the king of quality's brand is now forgotten across a majority of the web. PopCap's last upload to their YouTube channel was four years ago on March 27th, 2015, though the Plants vs. Zombies channel is still rather active. The PopCap channel is not. The last video uploaded was titled, Working at PopCap Games. This is rather depressing when compared with the official PopCap Games Twitter account. The last two posts were on August 18th and May 2nd of 2017, respectively. One about retiring games from the App Store, and the other a message about reducing the team size in Seattle, or just firing people. Ouch. You can still apply to their Shanghai studio, though. Most would point the finger toward the usual suspect here, EA. Something I am not exactly guilt-free of doing. But here, I would argue, PopCap was already on the decline before EA. EA just turned it into the Plants vs. Zombies development farm. Electronic Arts bought PopCap in a deal nearly worth $1.5 billion on July 12, 2011, making it the largest tech deal in Seattle up to that point. PopCap's fate was already sealed by 2008, though, even if PVZ was released in 2009. PopCap's biggest strength and weakness was its self-admitted developmental Luddism. Due to its unique nature, PopCap was always isolated from the larger games business. Purposefully so. They drew inspiration from older games, but none of their products were really cutting edge or modern. Their projects were just so polished due to the unstructured workflow of the company. The same strategy Valve uses. The problem was that Bejeweled is not the same caliber of money printer as Steam is. PopCap slowly got outpaced and could not catch up, no matter how well PVZ sold. When the iPhone was released on June 29th, 2007, PopCap was on the cutting edge of casual games, ones that would fit nicely on the App Store. The problem was that creative burnout was already setting in, and the pivot to phone games happened too late. Plants vs. Zombies made the jump well, making good use of the touchscreen mechanics, but it was already a market crowded with apps. After 2010, PopCap would have hits, but they would all be sequels to their established franchises. PopCap may have simply been too ahead of the curve in the industry. Candy Crush proves this. There are plenty of other phone games that embrace the PopCap strategy. PopCap's influence weighs heavily on the casual and phone game markets. Plenty of popular mobile games are spiritual successors to PopCap games. Bookworm, Insane Aquarium, Plants vs. Zombies, and many others fit perfectly on the iPhone or smartphone. Most even think Plants vs. Zombies was an iPhone original game, but after PVZ in 2009, PopCap's cycle of game development could just not survive in the modern landscape. Hell, Plants vs. Zombies is even more popular than PopCap now, but how many know about money bags? EA has stripped PopCap of all their defining franchises. It seems the plants survived the garden. Most reviews anyone will read of the company now talk about how EA has completely changed PopCap. 
So while Plants vs. Zombies has survived to its recent 10 year anniversary, the studio that gave it birth has been unalterably changed. PopCap's influence still lives on across the web, the web of both influence and games, and the internet too. No one can really find PopCap anymore. Bejeweled, Peggle, and Plants vs. Zombies still sell well, and everyone knows at least one PopCap game, if only in passing. The studio itself though has become obscure. It still exists, but in a highly reduced form. The peak and polish is long gone. Just plants now. PopCap was once on the cutting edge of casualty. Ten years of Blants vs. Zombies have proved it. The franchise has barely aged a day. PopCap was never perfect, but it was quality. Still, it shambles on through Plants vs. Zombies. Its day is long gone, but it still moves on. From modem to mortuary. Moments will be lost. Time, like tears in rain. Time to die. 